Hey, I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. And in this video, we continue our look at the Outer Banks with a visit to Fort Raleigh National Historic Site in Manteo, North Carolina. And if you like this video, I hope that you will do us a favor and hit the thumbs up button. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Share us with your friends and leave a comment below. We really appreciate it. Thanks. So Fort Raleigh is a national park. It's free to get in, although there is one attraction on site where you do have to buy a ticket, but we'll talk about that in a minute. We were actually there during the spring 2020 coronavirus shutdown, and the park had just reopened. However, the buildings are all closed except for the restrooms. You are able to get into that. But there's a visitor center on site. There's some educational displays. Those were closed, but a lot of their attractions are located outside, so you could still walk around and see everything. The first thing you come to as you're walking through the park is the 1896 Monument. This was a monument that was carved into granite back in 1896 when they first began the preservation of the site. And the inscription on this monument discusses how this is the site where the first English settlers built a colony. They called it the New Fort in Virginia, even though it's in what is now known as North Carolina. These were the first English settlers in America. And as a part of that group, the first English baby was born on American soil. Her name was Virginia Dare, and this is actually a pretty big claim to fame to this area. And it discusses how she was baptized soon after being born. After you pass that, you're just walking through a park. There's some benches, nice little pathway through the woods here until you get to the next place of interest in the park, which is what's known as the earthwork. So the early settlers, as this sign and some others in the area explain, would build this earthwork. They'd dig a trench basically around an area they wanted to fortify, and they would take all the dirt they dug up and use it to build walls. And this is a recreation of that. Archaeologists found evidence of earthwork on this site. And then, and it was around 100 years ago, archaeologists began building it back up to show what it would look like. So this is kind of an idea. You see, you're walking here through the entrance of this small fort area. Uh, there's a trench all around it, and this the earth has been built up here to build a wall. This wouldn't have been big enough for them to live in, so historians don't know exactly what this site was used for. It could have been an armory. Um, they could have been storing food here or something, no one's sure, but it definitely wasn't big enough for the colonists to live in. There is a fortified encampment that they would have lived in that's mentioned in historical documents that hasn't been found yet. So it's pretty cool to see archaeologists' recreation of what this earthwork would have looked like. And here's the trenches around it. So it was the late 1800s, early 1900s that archaeologists found this site, and then in the early 1900s they worked on rebuilding it and planting grass on the earthworks to grow it into what it is now. And this park is also home to the play, The Lost Colony. This is a play that retells the story of the settlers once they had settled. Three years later, ships from England came to bring them supplies and found that all the settlers were gone, just mysteriously disappeared. No one knows what happened to them, though there are some theories. But this play talks about their life here, and you can see it's in this waterside theater. Very, very pretty theater, an outdoor theater for this play. This actually started in 1937. It's been running every summer since then, except for World War II when they shut down. And then also, unfortunately, this summer, the summer of 2020, they did not get to have their season due to the coronavirus pandemic. So this is the only other time that they've been shut down. We actually haven't gotten to see the play yet. We were really excited, hoping that we could see it, but 
With everything shut down, we didn't get to, so we hope maybe we can go back next year. But it's a really famous play. There's about 37,000 people that usually see it annually. And one of the stats said three and a half million people have seen it since it started in 1937. Actually, even Andy Griffith appeared in this play. He was in the cast for several summers while he was a college student. So there's a few other interesting things to see on this site as well. One of them is the First Light of Freedom Monument. It commemorates the history of Roanoke Island's Freedmen's Colony, set up during the American Civil War. So the colony was set up by northern troops as a safe haven for slaves who escaped. If a slave could escape captivity and make their way to this island, then the Northern Army was here and had set up a freedman's colony where they were trained in how to live a new life after slavery. So this is a monument on the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. Also nearby, there are a couple of hiking trails. The one we went on was called the Freedom Trail. It's 1.25 miles of hiking through the woods. It was a fun little hike. When you get to the end of it, you're looking out over the sound, out onto the water. So some really good views at the end. We were kind of expecting some sort of historical markers to tell us something along the way. It's, it's literally just a 1.25 mile walk through the woods, but it was a nice walk. And like I said, it ends with some great views. So also on this site is the Elizabethan Gardens. Now this is a separate ticket. It costs $9 to get in. This was actually created in memory of the colonists by the women of the Garden Club of North Carolina. And as you enter, they have this listing of all of the names of the various colonists who lived there. It even shows the two babies that were born there, one of which was Virginia Dare. The other one they don't have a lot of information on, they just have a first name. But it's really neat that they have all the names listed here. And this is a large botanical garden area with lots of paths. Here you see a wishing fountain. That's where you start. There's also an audio tour. It wasn't operating when we were there due to the coronavirus, and a lot of the buildings were shut down, but most of the exhibits are outside. So we were able to walk around and look. They have signs that tell you what you're seeing, the different types of plants, some of the different types of birds or animals that you may see, and then anything that was of historical significance. One of the outdoor attractions is this greenhouse where they grow a lot of their plants. They also sell plants. And this was shut down due to coronavirus, but you could walk around the outside and see what all they usually have. Another popular spot is this statue of Queen Elizabeth I. It's made of metal, and it was really fascinating the intricacies that were the decorations on her dress, on her outfit. I can't imagine how the creators produced this piece of artwork. It was pretty amazing. And then they have a lot of different areas. There's a lot of seating, so if you want to sit down on a bench along the way. We saw people walking small dogs or coming in just for a walk. This is a grassy area kind of in the center where you can have a picnic or just uh, lay out a blanket and relax in the garden. And then this is the butterfly house, and this is something that you can usually go in and see all the butterflies. It was also closed due to the pandemic, but you could look at all the decorations outside. You could read about the different types of butterflies that are there, that are native to this area. And then they had a lot of just really pretty decorations of butterflies. They also have a children's garden that is a playground for kids. Now this was also shut down when we were there, but this looks like a really fun place. They had lots of activities that the kids could do, some games, some different things that they could play. There was a sand pit, I believe there was a swing set, a little shed, and it was all very educational. So it talked about the different types of plants and things that you find there.
And then the centerpiece of the area is this sunken garden area. It has a really nice fountain. There are stairs that lead down to it. Just a really nice, peaceful, pretty area to sit and rest a while. There's also a couple spots where there was good waterfront views looking out over the sound as well. So that is our first look at Mantio. We do have a part two coming where we're going to show you the other places that we explored. But if you liked this video, I hope that you will give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss one of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you the next time. We're traveling through.